Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving an interesting differential equation. I think Michael Penn made a similar video a while ago. I can't remember exactly when, but and he used uh, substitution uh, to solve that problem. I'm going to be using a different approach here. First of all, I want you to notice a couple things. We have y double prime, the second derivative of y with respect to x equals e to the power y. So y is kind of like a function of x, and we don't have e to the power x on the right-hand side. Notice that if we had y double prime equals e to the x, the solution of this would be fairly easy, okay? But we have e to the power y, which complicates things a great deal. So let's see how that plays out. So here's what I'm going to do. Uh, first of all, notice that we have the second derivative on the left-hand side. So if I can multiply both sides by the first derivative, actually I'm giving this problem a really good uh, jump because the product uh, can be written uh, as the derivative of something. You'll see in a little bit, but let's go ahead and do it. So that's my motivation. I'm multiplying both sides by the first derivative of y. So y double prime times y prime equals e to the power y times y prime. Okay, so y prime is the first derivative of y. And now, here's what I want you to notice. If you take the derivative of something like x squared, right? You'll get 2x, and then the derivative of x is just 1, right? Now, what happens if you take the derivative of y squared? Then you get the 2 in the front, so that's going to be 2y, but then you have to multiply by the derivative of the inside, which is y prime. Because y is a function of x, we also have to consider from chain rule the der derivative of y. So those two situations are very similar, but kind of different too. So notice that the product of y and y prime comes together when I differentiate y squared. But I don't want this product, I want the product of the first derivative and the second derivative, so I kind of have to uh, up my derivatives or go to the derivative level. I don't know if that makes sense. I'm kind of trying to uh, make it more clear. But anyways, let's just do it. So here's what I'm trying to say in plain terms. If you differentiate y prime squared, let's do it. Then you get the following. Bring the 2 to the front and then bring the power down and then multiply by the derivative of the inside. Now you're talking about the derivative of y prime, which is y double prime. You see what I'm talking about? This is what I've been talking about. It's probably was easier to show than tell. So I got what I needed, but uh, with an extra two in the front. So what I need to do is multiply both sides by one half because constants can always be taken out and then we'll get what we want. Make sense? So here's the idea. If you differentiate one half of y prime squared, then you get y prime times y double prime because of the fact that the two is going to be canceled out. Make sense? And how do you get this? Well, we just talked about the chain rule. So if you differentiate e to the power y, then you get e to the y times y prime. Awesome. So we got the derivative of two things like the derivative of one half of y prime squared equals the derivative of e to the y e to the y just that's it so we have the derivative of something equals the derivative of something else in other words we can integrate both sides and that's going to give us what we want how well we can do the following just forget about the derivatives one half of y prime squared equals e to the power y but then i have to add the constant right yeah, of course, it has to be on one side at least. So now we can multiply both sides by 2 to get rid of the fraction. And we get this. And then obviously c is a constant, so I can go ahead and replace it with something like k. And write this as 2 times e to the y plus k. k is a constant if c is a constant, right? So we got this interesting expression where we have the first derivative squared equals... 2e to the y plus a constant. Let's go ahead and take care of this. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to integrate both sides again one more time. Well, not integrate. I'm sorry. I meant square root. That's what I meant. Square root both sides. And we're going to get plus minus, you know, 
the square root of 2e to the y plus k. Now for simplicity's sake, I can just go ahead and pick the positive solution and the rest uh, is going to be very similar. Let me go ahead and I'm going to be doing some simplifications over, along the way because uh, things are going to get um, really complicated otherwise. Anyway, so let's just go with the positive and the negative is just going to be mirrored like that. So this is y prime. Let's go ahead and write it as dy over dx equals this. And now what I need to do from this point on is uh, write this as a separable differential equation because it's separable. So we can kind of separate the variables of y and x. And then we can integrate both sides. This is the funnest part of that. Let's go ahead and integrate. But when you integrate dx, that's easy. It's going to be x plus c. But what about that uh, crazy square root at the bottom, right? So here's what we can do. We can multiply this by e to the power negative y and e to the power negative y. Of course, this e to the negative y is going to go inside. So it's going to look like this. It's going to go in as e to the power negative 2y. Multiply by that, it's going to be the square root of 2 e to the power negative y plus k times e to the power negative y. And here comes, and let me go ahead and handle this all the way through, and then I'm going to set it up to uh, set it equal to this one eventually. I don't want to keep writing the integral of dx or x plus c. Okay, now here's what we're going to do. We're going to use the power of substitution, which is super duper powerful, just amazing. Set e to the power negative y equal u. And then from here, differentiate both sides. You're going to get negative e to the power negative y dy equals the derivative of u with respect to u is 1 du, or just du. Awesome. Now we got this. That's negative du right here. So let's go ahead and do that. Negative du divided by, at the bottom, I want to write this k first k times u plus 2, actually, um, I probably messed up here. Let me check, double check. Okay, it's supposed to be, sorry. This is supposed to be k, k times e to the power negative y, negative 2y, because when I took the negative uh, e to the power negative y inside, it became e to the power negative 2y. Good. So that's going to give me then k times u squared plus 2u. Okay, if it's your birthday, happy birthday to you. Okay, sorry, I can't avoid it. So now we got this. Okay, great. So how do you solve it? Again, for simplicity's sake, allow me to set k equals 1 because otherwise we're going to have to deal with crazy stuff and crazy cases. So if k is equal to 1 for simplicity's sake, then we get the following. Negative du over the square root of u squared plus 2u. So that can kind of be written as a perfect square minus 1 because that's what it is, right? And then integrating this should be through trigonometric functions, or at least that's one way to do it. I'm going to replace u plus 1 with secant theta. And then from here, we're going to get du equals the derivative of secant, which is secant times tangent. Memorize it if you're doing calculus, for sure, times d theta. And then we're going to plug these in. And obviously, when you replace u plus 1 with secant, you're going to get secant squared minus 1 which is tangent squared. The square root of tangent squared is tangent under certain conditions, absolute value, so on and so forth. But this is what we get. Negative secant theta, tangent theta, d theta divided by, what was it? Tangent theta, right? Okay. And then the tangent is going to cancel out. We're going to end up with a negative secant. I hope you do know the integral of secant, which is the ln of the absolute value of secant minus tangent. Again, this is something you can memorize or there are ways to go about it. But anyways, finally, this is equal to x plus k. Remember, we had the integral of dx on the right-hand side, which we didn't write for a long time, but now I'm going to bring it back. Cool, cool. So far, hopefully. And what I can do is multiply both sides by negative 1. I want to get rid of the negative in front of this ln thing. And that's going to give me negative x minus k. And negative k can be replaced with something else, but anyways... So we get this interesting expression. Let's go ahead and back substitute. What is secant? Secant is u plus 1. So we're going to get ln, the absolute value of u plus 1. Plus, if you draw a right triangle, you're going to get this as your tangent. By the way, how I got that? You draw a right triangle with theta. Secant theta is u plus 1. So this is u plus 1. This is 1 from Pythagorean theorem. This is going to be the square root of u squared plus 2u. And tangent is going to be that. Make sense? And this is equal to negative x minus k. And now, finally, replace u with what it is. That's going to be ln 
absolute value of e to the power negative y plus 1 plus the square root of e to the power negative 2y plus 2 times e to the power negative y. And then this is probably a positive, so I don't need absolute value anymore. Yay, that's great. So I can write it like this. And then that is equal to negative x plus, let's go ahead and replace negative k with c sub 1. Because I use c, I can't use c again, or you can use it, whatever. <laughs> and wow, don't you think this is a beautiful solution? Yeah, it's complicated. You can't really extract the y from here. That's why. Anyways, this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.